Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to compare the forehand techniques of Carlos Alcaraz and the one and only Roger Federer. Now, on the left here, this video of Car Carlos is courtesy of Liam Apolato over at Court Level Tennis, so thank you, Liam. And on the right, this video is courtesy of 12 KGB Tennis, both on YouTube. you got to subscribe to these awesome channels. All right, so the first thing is let's look at their split step timing. So here is Alcarez hitting with Rublev at the Australian Open last year, and I just want you to look at the split step timing. So the split step is this move that Alcarez is making with his feet right here, where he's landing on the, the, the front half of his foot, and you want to make that move as your opponent hits. Specifically, you want to be doing this after your opponent hits the ball. So you can see Rublev in the distance making contact right now, and look how Carlos is in the air and then lands the split step after Rublev hits the ball. It's the same thing with Federer. Federer is hitting with Burdich here. Notice Burdich hits the backhand, and then Federer lands the split step. Watch the pros. They land after the opponent hits the ball. It doesn't matter if it's a return to serve at the net. Every time they split step, they actually are in the air as the opponent hits, and they land just after. The second thing I want to show you is the grip. The grips that they use are different, and this is important because different grips give you different um, advantages and disadvantages. The grip that Carlos is using is a semi-Western grip. Federer is using an Eastern grip. Now, the first thing to understand grips is to know that the, the handle itself is an octagon, right? And so when you're right-handed, you count to the right to get the eight panels. And on your hand, you want to know about the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad. Federer uses an Eastern grip. So he's going to put the base knuckle of his index finger and his heel pad on panel number three. Now, Carlos is using a semi-Western grip. Again, base knuckle of the index finger and the heel pad, but they're going to go on panel number four. Typically, the more Western or semi-Western the grip, the more spin you can produce. All right, so now that we understand the split step timing and the grips, let's look at the actual swing itself. So let's first compare the unit turns of both players. So the first thing, obviously, world-class technique. They both turn their chest to the side. The moment they see that the ball is coming to them, they get their body side on to their opponent. You'll notice with Carlos that his hitting hand is higher than Fetters. And this is actually something that I teach. I like to get my students to have their hitting hand, their elbow, and their shoulder all relatively the same height. I like that higher turn for recreational players because I think it really keeps them from taking a swing that is too large. You look at Federer, his hitting hand is much, is, I shouldn't say much lower, but it is noticeably lower. But their, their non-hitting hands are actually at a very similar height. What this produces is a difference in the racket angle. You'll see that Federer's racket is pointing more up, where Carlos has the tip of his racket pointing more over the fence, where the tip of his racket right now is basically pointing at this tree right here, where Federer's racket, without a doubt, is pointing more up. That's just a result of having the hitting hand lower with the non-hitting hand at a similar height between the two. Here we can see Carlos's armpit. It's exposed to the back fence and back camera, but we cannot see that with Federer. Again, I am really liking what Carlos is doing here. Just from the initial turn, I would say copy Carlos if you're looking to improve your technique, if you're looking to copy a pro, I think it's actually going to be easier for you to copy what Alcaraz is doing at the moment. And if you're loving this type of content, make sure you hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Now, not just the technique is slightly different here, but also the timing. So Federer drops his racket down earlier than Carlos. You can see that Federer's racket begins dropping before the ball bounces, where Carlos the ball bounces and his racket is still up. Now, you might say, well, that might be because, you know, Federer's ball is coming faster or Federer's ball is coming a little deeper. Well, I can actually tell you that if we look at the time it takes for Burdich's shot, you can see Burdich is hitting the ball right now. It's actually going to take Burdich's shot about 1.28 seconds to get to Federer by the time he contacts. So let's look. So, Burdich hits the ball right now, and let's see if I got the time right. Oh, okay, 1.26. All right, I was close. The pre before I recorded this, I, I, I was 1.28. But let's let's see now what Alcaraz has, the amount of time Alcaraz, uh, Alcaraz has here. So let's see how long it takes for the ball to get to Alcaraz. Ah, so 1.06. So Alcaraz actually has less time 
from the time his opponent hits until the time he hits, yet Federer's racket is actually dropping earlier. We can see this. If I connect these videos, look how Federer's racket's dropping earlier, but yet they actually hit the ball at the same time. So I think it's interesting that Federer drops the racket earlier. And the reason for this is Federer is not going to really use gravity-assisted racket speed on his forehand. He is going to use a very pronounced lag in order to get his racket speed. So you can see when Federer drops his racket, he drops his racket by straightening his arm. So you can see his arm is bent here. And then he straightens the arm. And as he's dropping the racket, the tip of his racket is actually pointing off to the right of the camera. When Alcarez drops, he's dropping and accelerating. But as the racket drops, the tip of the racket is pointing back to the back fence. So if you're going to be using a pronounced lag the way Federer does, and I'll show you that lag in a second, you're actually going to drop a little earlier and you're going to drop lower. You can see with Federer how much lower his hand gets. So his hand right now is kind of like at the bottom of his pocket, where at no time here do we actually see Alcarez's hand getting to the bottom of his pocket, where his hand, and I'm, we're copying his hand position, his hand is making this move. So his hand is not dropping as low as Fetter's. Again, this is a product that Federer is actually going to be using a pronounced lag that, that Alcarez just doesn't have. Now, Alcarez absolutely has a lag forehand, right? So there's absolutely lag, and you can see that right here, where here he has a very neutral wrist, and then his hand goes forward, and he sets this pronounced wrist angle. So yes, he has lag and looseness in the hand and wrist, but it's not the same technique as Federer's, where Federer is dropping and the tip of the racket's pointing off to the right. You'll see that when Federer drops and he straightens that arm, and then as his body starts to rotate, this pronounced lag where the racket goes back as his hand goes forward. Look at this. Look how the hand goes forward and the racket goes back, and they switch. So the, the racket and hand actually switch positions. This is not a, an on-purpose throwing of the racket back. He's just rotating his body and his hand is going forward. And since his wrist is a hinge, the, the, the hinge reacts to this and it sets the wrist position. Where well, Alcarez, he doesn't have that pronounced lag. Obviously, he has a lag, but not the same pronounced wrist lag that you see with Fetter. Now, as they get to contact... They both use what's called an inside out swing. And you're going to use an inside out swing really on, on most shots in tennis. And an inside out swing just means you're swinging away from the body. You want to swing away from the body. So you have to have a, you know, noticeable distance between you and the ball. And Federer's got the same thing. There's this notable distance between you and the ball. Make sure that you are standing far enough away from the ball that you can swing what's called inside out. Inside towards you and then out away from you. Inside towards you. You can see that with Alcarez. And then he's going out away from him. That means that you're going to be able to, at contact, be swinging up to produce pure topspin. So players who stand too close to the ball and they put the contact point here, they tend to swing outside in, getting a lot of side spin on the ball. And then if they hit a little too high over the net, the ball tends to go out. So they're standing a great distance away from the ball, producing or allowing them to swing inside out. You'll also notice that in this lag position, and this is where the butt cap is pointing at the ball for both of them, their racket face is closed. And this just means that the racket face is tilted toward the ground slightly. Now, you'll actually notice that Federer's racket is tilted on this forehand a little less than Carlos's. And that's really due to, without any manipulation of their hand in position, it's really due to the grip. The more western your grip, the more down your strings point. The more eastern your grip, the more to the right your, your racket will be naturally. Pros change this, not their grip, but they do change the wrist position in certain situations. But just kind of comparison to comparison, you'll see that the racket face is typically more closed with players who are more semi-Western or full Western. So let's get to contact. And I actually kind of combed through many, many videos and many, many forehands in order to find forehands that were very comparable from the stance, you know, to the, to the height of contact. So I, I think this is a really good comparison. The first thing, let's look at the head. 
Look how they are locked in on contact. You know, the ball is traveling so fast and the, the, the contact is so short that you really cannot see the ball hit your strings. But it's important that you keep your head super still so that your racket doesn't veer off course and it makes it easier, you know, to hit more of the sweet spot of the racket and not frame your shot. I also want you to notice their arm at contact. So Carlos has more of a bent arm. And it's not severely bent. It's just slightly bent. Where Fetters is more straight. You'll also notice where their elbow is pointing. And this is due to their grip as well. Fetters' elbow position, his elbow is pointing more back. Where with Carlos, we can see that his elbow, his the point of his elbow is pointing more down. Why? Because of the grip. When you are hitting an eastern forehand uh you know, you, uh, hitting a forehand with an eastern grip like Feder, your palm faces forward when you're striking the ball, where with a semi-western grip, your palm is facing up at about 45 degrees because each bevel is 45 degrees different than the previous bevel. You know, there are eight bevels on the racket. Each bevel is around 45 degrees different. 45 times eight is 360 around the grip. So you will actually notice, and this is actually one of the reasons why players struggle with changing grips. You know, if you're using an Eastern and you're trying to change to a semi-Western or vice versa, it's because players don't really understand what's going to happen with the different grip. When you are hitting an, a, a semi-Western forehand the way Carlos is, your palm is going to be facing up at 45 degrees when you strike the ball, right? So you can't have your palm facing forward with a semi-Western grip. You'll, you'll bury that ball into the ground. So you got to understand the difference in the elbow position and arm position at contact. Another difference I really like or one thing I really like about Alcarez's forehand, as you're noticing, I'm really liking Alcarez's forehand, is his non-hitting hand is visible over his non-hitting shoulder. Now, I'm definitely not telling you that Federer's forehand is wrong. His forehand is gorgeous, and it has helped him win 20 Grand Slams. It's amazing. And if I was his coach, I wouldn't change a thing about his forehand. But one thing that I think amateurs improve upon with their forehand is when they have their non-hitting hand visible to the camera over their non-hitting shoulder, it helps make sure that the hips twist. What you don't want is this non-hitting hand to be dropping as you're hitting the ball, but rather you want it to be rising. And you can see that, that his non-hitting hand is rising as he hits the ball. Watch his non-hitting hand rise. And that's just really helpful in making sure that your hips and your shoulders rotate. Again, I'm not saying that Federer is wrong. You have the shoulder tilt that is very common with the top players in the world where their non-hitting shoulder is slightly higher. It's one of the reasons why actually Alcarez's left hand is visible over the left shoulder is that he has that sh slight shoulder tilt. And then let's look at the follow through. Federer's swing is definitely more across after he hits the ball. Now he's swung inside out at contact. He's swinging up, which is producing topspin, but he's definitely more left, I'm sorry, right to left in his follow through. And we can see that if we draw a straight line at the top of his head, you'll notice that his racket is never visible over that line. Well, with Alcarez, we draw that same line across his head. We can see that the racket is visible over his head. Again, something that I love about Alcarez that you should copy in order to hit more consistent forehands. Amateur players who tend to swing more across shank the ball. They're less accurate. They tend to hit shorter um, and they tend to hit less spin where the higher follow through gets the the player to hit swing out more toward the target and hit better topspin, hit the sweet spot more. So you can see that Federer's swing is more across where Alcarez is, is definitely higher. This is something that you see with Dominic Team that the hitting hand is up by the top of the head. Something I love about Federer on this forehand is that he catches the racket with his left hand. I think that's a really easy way to help control the swing with amateur players uh, where Alcarez is not doing this. Again, the ball is gone at this point, so the ball is not affected by this um, with Alcarez, but with amateur players, I feel it really helps them to control their body when they do catch the racket. So all in all, incredible forehand technique from both. But they use different swings. I'm sorry, they use different grips. They definitely have slightly different unit turns. They have different timing of the drop. They also use a different drop entirely, um, where Federer's racket points off to the right, where Alcarez points the tip of the racket at the back fence. They both have a loose wrist position here where they set the wrist, butt cap pointing at the ball. They both close the racket face, swing away from their body. 
um, at contact, you know, that we under, we understand the difference in their arm position and hand position at contact due to the grips that they're using. I love Alcarez's left hand at contact. Head is super still at contact, super far away from contact. I love it. Federer does go a little more across after contact where or Alcarez goes up, up more, which I absolutely love. But look, they both are somebody who if you copy, you might be hitting the best forehands of your life. But don't feel like you have to follow Federer or you have to follow Alcarez. I made this video for you to try each type of swing and find out what swing is going to be in your best interest. Learn from this video and apply it to your game. And there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.